Are you plagued by feelings of cosmic isolation or existential dread? Do you feel yourself just another empty vessel in a genetic paper doll chain that allows a guy? Hello there. My name is Dr. Anton Jessup, writer of monster studies here at the university. I've just returned from an unexpected vacation of sorts. A stay at, oh, I suppose you'd call it a, a monastic spa retreat. Lots of skin peels. I'm still uh, recovering, but I'm making excellent progress, thanks to several drums of discontinued pharmaceuticals that I discovered here in the university basement. Oh, the stuff's far too concentrated for direct consumption. But by introducing it into the university water supply, I've managed to achieve the perfect balance. <laughs> ah, pungent yet palatable. I've also added a little fungus to my diet. This variety comes to me from the islands of the South Pacific, a region known for its natural wonders, as well as more than a few unnatural ones. Oh, certainly Monster Island tends to take all the headlines with its rampaging kaiju, but the Isle of Matango offers an even more insidious horror. You may call them the mushroom people or the fungus of terror, but the denizens of Matango pay no heed to human languages. These endoparasites swiftly colonize any animal that consumes its fungal bait, hijacking the host's behavior so that the individual then encourages others to partake of tainted shrooms. Then madness ensues as the fungus consumes the host, transforming it into a shambling humanoid fungus with flesh-rending claws. There are other monstrous fungus among us, to be sure. They shamble through wasted cities, attack our folk singers, infest best-selling authors, and occasionally turn Russo-Finnish heroes into bears. They're all real fun guys, but the mindless mushrooms of Matango also have their parallels in the world of terrestrial fungi. First, let's consider the Matango's ravenous hunger for flesh, an appetite very much in keeping with their natural world kin. Well, I just consider the edible oyster mushroom. Yes, the one from your stir fry. These devilish little delicacies actually hunt and consume roundworms and spiders, perhaps to supplement low levels of nitrogen available in wood. According to a 2015 study published in PLOS Biology, the shrooms employ special proteins to punch deadly holes in the cells of its prey, the very tactic that human immune cells use against bacterial invaders. It's quite understandable, really. Fungi serve as our planet's primary decomposers. Are they overstepping their boundaries to digest something that's still alive and kicking? I think not. Ah, but what of the Matango's insidious ability to hijack a host's brain and alter its behavior? The fungus rewires a host to further its monstrous agenda, and we see eerily similar behavior in the fungi of the Cordyceps and Ophiocordyceps genuses. These endoparasites prey on anthropods, each species specializing in a particular victim. Orpheocordyceps unilateralis targets bullet ants, compelling the unfortunate host to climb a tree, attach to a leaf, and grow a spore-fruiting tube out of its head. Naturally, this eruption kills the ant, but the emitted spores will infect an entire new generation. As a result, the ants fear and shun a fungi-infected compatriot, just as humans have come to fear and shun the horrors of Matango. So think to Matango the next time you indulge in a little shroomery. What's tasting you back? What's altering your behavior? You can try to think for yourself, but you may already be a pawn in some alien force's monstrous agenda. Keep drinking the water and in transmission.